Welcome to Laser Show Designer Quick Show version 2.0. In this video, we're going to cover some of the new things that we have done with 2.0, some of the new enhancements and the changes when compared with Quick Show version 1.0. Well, the most visible difference is the new workspace, which has some new uh, pages both on the graphics category and the atmospherics category. On the graphics category, we have a new page full of logos with popular corporate logos. Could be very handy when making corporate shows. We have a new page with complete shows, including a little example show here for New Year's Countdown. This show is intended to show exactly how the quick timeline feature works and how to make your own little show there. Little mix category there. This was done with our capture and shows how to use the quick capture tool. In the atmospherics category, this category has been completely rearranged. We have more pages with more imagery here, including sheets, waves, various cone effects, box type effects for atmospherics and audience scanning, fans of beam effects, new hot beams section. This is particularly handy for overhead beam effects. Some categories with a The page was here um, in, with 1.0, but we've added some new things and actually a, a new feature called Virtual Laser Jockey, which we'll be talking about in the next few minutes. And you can learn about the new workspace here by choosing Workspace Information. It tells you about the workspace here, who created it, what the philosophy is from the workspace, and a little checklist here of what you should do when you're setting up and preparing to use the workspace. In addition to the workspace, we have a new language menu here, which allows you to choose the language that the user interface will be using and also the videos will be using. Current languages are English, Chinese, French, and Portuguese, but QuickShow has the ability to support other languages pretty easy by putting a special language file within the folder. And if you would like to work with us, and help to translate QuickShow into other languages, please contact us. In addition to that, we have the new QuickShow video help. So in addition to the help file help that we've had since 1.0, we have a new video help, which will start up Windows Media Player and allow you to go through tutorial chapters on each of the main features of QuickShow. We added a new color control system, which can be accessed by the Quick Setup. We added support for RGV lasers. Those are lower cost, full color laser projectors. And also support for TTL and analog color systems being separate from each other. In 1.0, they were kind of combined. And they can also be accessed here in the projector settings dialog box. Go over here to color settings and you can choose the color mode and whether you have a TTL laser an analog laser with linear response or an analog laser with log response. Th these options will get the best color performance no matter what laser projector you have. We added an ability to take this preview window here and split it into nine separate sections. So for example what you can do is have multiple laser projectors. So for example I'm adding the ability to have four separate laser projectors here. And so the preview window here allows us to check, figure out which laser projector we want to go to. So for example, if we want this to go to the scanner one zone, I just click on that, click on cues, and from that point forward, any cues I click on will go to scanner one main. 
if I want to send this these graphics to the secondary graphics screen, if I just click on this, start clicking on the cues, it will send the cues there. If I want to, I can go into a multi-mode and send cues to multiple places at the same time. One of the things that you might notice is the layout of this. It says scanner 1, scanner 2, scanner 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is the exact layout of the numeric keyboard on a computer key, keypad. So by pressing the key, computer keys, I can instantly access these zones and selections. So this allows me to both see what will be in those zones and also to trigger those zones. If I press the zero key on the computer keyboard or if I click on this, the cues will always use their preferred zone. In the atmospherics category, it's zone eight. In the graphics category, it's zone one. And in the hot beams category, it's zone seven. So that's something that's new. To go back to the default mode, we just click here. We've added support for DMX with QuickShow 2.0. For example, if I come down here to settings, DMX settings, what I can do is I can use the Entech DMX USB Pro, which is a very popular USB DMX dongle type device. And I can use it for DMX input or DMX output. When we use DMX input, you specify the starting channel here, and this will tell you the channel assignment for the DMX input, and also gives you information about how the channel values will affect QuickShow. So that's DMX input. If we enable for DMX output, then we can control some DMX settings here, including the number of channels. And we also get this quick DMX tab down here, which will allow us to create complete DMX sequences or just simple DMX settings. For example, let's say I have this kind of a setup right here. I just want to trigger all three of these channels with a single key. So I could just drag and drop this to Q, and it's there anytime I need it. We added a new quick capture tool to QuickShow. This allows for very easy capturing of cues. What you could do is simply drag and drop cues down here to the quick capture tool. For example, if I wanted to create a single key that will trigger both a graphic, a DMX, and for example, a beam sequence all at the same time, all you do is drag and drop down into this area and then you can just drag and drop this to a queue. And what you can see is I have a graphic and a beam and a DMX happening all at the same time. So when I click on that, that one queue will give me all three of them at the same time. Another way that you can use the quick capture tool is simply by, there's a couple of different ways really. Let's say I trigger multiple graphics here like this In the quick capture, if I just click on the capture button, this will capture whatever I happen to have going on up there, which I could then drag and drop to a queue. But there's an even easier way that we've made, which is you could just, whatever you have happening up here in the preview window, you could just drag and drop that right to a queue and it will instantly capture that. We've dramatically improved the timeline portion of the program. So for example, now it's easier than ever to create complete laser shows just by dragging and dropping events onto there. And you can also add an audio file. This can be expanded to give you more access. And each one of these cues can be edited very easily get a little bit higher resolution there so we can zoom in on that stretch this out a little bit and to edit this just right click and say edit event 
And so, for example, here's our little event there. We can change the size of that, make it smaller, start up in the upper left-hand corner, and then as time goes, we could say it gets bigger and moves down to the center. So this is how you edit the actual show events. We have a variety of snapping tools and zooming tools, as well as the ability to specify a start and end time for playback. So basically a dramatically improved quick timeline feature. We've added the ability to export any queue as a series of frames. So for example, if we check on this queue, do file export queue, what we can do is export this queue as a series of frames, which can then be used in any Pangolin compatible program. It could be used on LD2000, Showtime, Live Pro, even Live Quick. To demonstrate that that was exported, what I can do is re-import that. Just like this. So there's our queue. We've also added the ability to rearrange the workspace. So for example, if I wanted this tab to be to the right of that one, I can come over here to Page, move Page Right, and we can move these pages around very easily. If you right click here, you can control this with a lot more precision. One of the things that we've added, which is um, going to be very helpful to people who install Quick Show in clubs and other types of venues, is a new user mode. So for example, if we come here to settings and go to user interface access mode, we can see this thing called setup user interface. If we come here, one of the things that we can do is say, well, I only want to show the file menu, for, for example, perhaps, um, let's see, uh, on the menu strip, let's say I, I only want to show the file menu. I don't want to show any other menus at all. And um, on the file menu, the only thing I want people to be able to do is open up new workspaces, not save or import laser frames or anything else. On the quick tools, let's say we only want people to have access to the quick shape and quick trace tools and nothing else. We can make it so that the workspace automatically saves on exit, remove this multi-zone access on the preview window, show the master queue and live controls buttons over here. So we really have a lot of control over what we can allow a user to do and what we can allow them to see. And we can have a, a password here. Once the user wants to come back and change this, they'll have to enter a password. And so since I've just activated the user mode, you can see that the restrictions that I wanted are now in place. And the only menu I have here is the file menu. No more controls here or elsewhere. And no ability to split the screen since we told it we didn't want that to happen. Perhaps the newest and most important feature that we've added is the virtual laser jockey. Let me demonstrate this by going to the atmospherics page and to the statics section. This section includes a number of what it might appear to be pretty boring images. Well, these images can be made much more exciting by adding some effects to them. For example, we can throw some color on it like this, throw some chop on it like this, surface map it onto a sphere and triple it like that, and so forth. Now the neat thing about this page is that it works really well with the virtual laser jockey. 
What the virtual laser jockey enables you to do is trigger cues automatically to the beat of the music or to the beat of audio input, which we'll get to in a minute. So what you could do is you could say, I want to trigger a new one of these cues every four beats. What you do is simply set the beat of the music by tapping the space bar like that. QuickShow will automatically capture the beat of the music. Then when you enable the virtual laser jockey, it will automatically trigger a new visual every four beats, since that's what we set it here, to the beat of the music. We could then use the quick effects section to enhance what's going on out here. Let's take a look at another example. What I can do is come over here to the waves section and use the virtual laser jockey to trigger cues on this page every four beats. Now while that's happening, what I can do as a real laser jockey, see this is what the virtual laser jockey is doing. I as a real laser jockey can come over here to a different page maybe even to the targets, go into flash mode, and then I can trigger the beam targets myself. And so now it is as though we have two laserists working on this laser show at the same time. One of them being the, the real laser, who is me, and one of them being the virtual laser jockey operating a different cue in the wave section every four beats. So in addition to being able to trigger cues to the beat of the music, the virtual laser jockey can do even more than that. For example, what we can do, we could say, randomize the cue that you trigger on this statics page. Now it'll pick a, a random cue. It's picking that one there, picking that one there, picking that one there. Every four beats it'll pick a random cue. Now coming down here into the quick effects section, you'll notice that we also have virtual laser jockey buttons for each one of the layers as well. And by right clicking, we can choose what these will do and how often they will do it as well. So for example, we can take the statics which are being triggered by this. We can also go ahead and have the virtual laser jockey layer additional color controls on top of that as well, automatically and automatically randomizing that. So now it makes it seem as though there's a real human operator operating this. In any event, Virtual Laser Jockey allows you to instantly trigger cues automatically to the beat of the music and it allows you to work in conjunction with that if you want to. This tool could be used as uh, something where you could just kind of go off and have a beer, start the laser show and have the Virtual Laser Jockey take over for a while, or something that you can work in conjunction with that. For example, as I said earlier, coming over here to trigger some cues on this page while I trigger cues on this page. Now as I said a little while ago, Virtual Laser Jockey can trigger things to the beat of the music based on the beat system or to incoming audio. If I right click on this, you'll see this trigger cues based on audio input. When I enable that, you'll see this new device come over here and which I can choose the audio input. In this case, there's only one audio input, but normally computers have several audio inputs. I'll choose this one. Now, unfortunately, this happens to be the microphone I'm speaking into, but I can perhaps illustrate how this works as I'm speaking into this microphone and doing this tutorial and also operating the software. 
So for example, this could be the laptop microphone picking up the music that's in the club. And so once again, I've right clicked, I have said that I want to trigger these cues based on audio input just so that I can see them. Let's say I want to trigger cues linearly within this page. And then so what I'm going to do is when I activate this by clicking the left mouse button on it, it will start triggering cues and uh, let's say every beat just so that I can really illustrate this very easily. It will trigger cues every beat and I'm going to have to speak the beats. So here goes. Boom, 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 boom. What you see here is that Virtual Laser Jockey is picking up the bass. As I'm speaking here, normally you don't see it picking up any bass. And each bass beat it picks up, it will light one of these little rectangles here just to let you kind of give you a visual indication that it's picking up on the audio. Boom, 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 boom. Now, despite the fact that this looks pretty cool and in this demonstration it looks like it's pretty reliable we don't really think that a software solution is as good as a human solution so for example there are tricky beats and double beats that audio might have um, and we believe that the easiest and most reliable way is still to use the beat system that's built into quickshow just like that there's simply nothing is re more reliable than a human that can listen to the beat of the music and tap the space bar. You only have to tap it a little bit and Quickshow will pick up the beat and then trigger the cues reliably every time. So that's just some of the new things that are in Quickshow 2.0. There are other things, but um, in the interest of time and brevity, we will um, end this little tutorial at this point in time. Please take a look at the other tutorial chapters which is found here in the video help menu and you'll be able to learn more about each one of these features in great depth.